Hello and welcome to another lecture on electrical circuit theory. Today we'll be looking at branch current analysis. So in my previous lecture, we looked at loop current analysis and we solved this circuit by formulating loops in the two meshes of this network. There's another way of solving KVL equations. So you recall that we use loop currents to solve KVL equations. And there's another way of applying KVL that rather than having these loops in the meshes, we can formulate currents in the branches. So these are the branches here, one, two, and three. So I can say that a current I1 flows in branch one and a current I2 flows in branch two. Downwards would be I1 minus I2. So this would be the current through this branch, branch number three. So as you can see, for this particular example, it doesn't matter whether we apply loop currents or branch currents. The solution of the network remains exactly the same. And you can click on this link to watch my previous video where we solve this network using loop current analysis and uh, we use the method of substitution to find the two currents. Now the situation changes when we have a current generator like here in the network. Because in this case, we can no longer apply loops. For example, if we would have applied loop current analysis, then we need loops in all three meshes. So we'll have, let's say we formulate loops like these. But in that case, we would need to know the drop across this current generator. And this is something that we don't know. So in this case, loop current analysis doesn't work, but we still have another way of writing KVL equations using branch current analysis. So in branch current analysis, we can formulate a current in each branch. So I1, let's say flows through this branch here, and let's say I2 is the current that flows towards this node here. And we also need to formulate a current in this branch. So let's say I3 is the current here. And I4, let's say, is the current that we want to find out. We want to solve this network in order to find I4. So as you can see that I1 and I2 both are entering this node and three amperes is also entering this node. So I can simply write the equation I1 plus I2 is equal to minus three amperes because three amperes is also entering and thus the current leaving this node would be minus three amperes. And this would be my equation one. Now if I apply KCL here and I3 is entering this node and I2 and I4 are leaving this node. So I can write that I3 is equal to I2 plus I4. Let me call this equation two. So I can eliminate I2 from this first equation. I can write I2 as minus three minus I1. And this value I put in equation two. So I get I3 is equal to minus 3 minus I1 plus I4 and let's take all the currents on one side. So I1 plus I3 minus I4 is equal to 3. So let me call this equation 3. So as you can see from this equation that I have three unknowns i1, i3, and i4. Thus, I need three equations to solve for these three variables. I already have one equation, thus I need two more equations. And if I want to apply KVL, I need two loops to form those two equations. Now, we can write those equations in such a manner that we avoid this current generator here. So, I can write this big loop like this. So 
this will be my first loop and let's have another loop like this through this upper mesh. So now let's write the KVL equations for this bigger loop. So I1 is entering like this, so it has a polarity positive minus like this. I2 is entering from here and thus the polarity is positive here and negative here. And I4 is with this polarity and I3 is positive negative like this. So if I write the first equation here, I would get 12 times I1 then minus 2 times I2 plus 5 times I4 and then we have this battery here is equal to 50 volts. And here again I eliminate I2 from this equation because I know from equation 1 that I2 can be written in terms of I1 so minus 2 times here I write minus 3 minus I1 plus 5 times I4 is equal to 50 and this when simplified comes out as 14 times I1 plus 5 times I4 is equal to 44. This is my equation 4 and now let's write this loop equation. This would be 10 times I3 plus, so this polarity here is plus, so plus 2 times I2 and this drop, since the loop is entering from here, would be with a negative sign, minus 12 times I1 is equal to 0. And here again, substituting for I2, I can write 10 times I3 plus 2 times minus 3 minus I1 minus 12 I1 is equal to 0. So these are the equations that I need to solve. So in my previous lecture on loop current analysis, we use the method of substitution. But here we'll be using the method of matrices because substitution becomes quite cumbersome in this case if I have to eliminate all these variables. So we'll be solving this network by writing it in the form of AX is equal to B, where X is the unknown vector. This is the vector of the unknown, which is current in our case. A is the coefficient matrix and B is the constant. So if I write my equations like this, so I'll have a coefficient matrix then an unknown vector is equal to a vector of constant. So the coefficients of the first equation would be 1, 1 and minus 1 and here I have my unknowns i1, i3 and i4 and the first constant is minus 3. The second row would be 14 times I1 plus 0 times I3 plus 5 times I4 is equal to 44. The third equation would be minus 14 times I1 plus 10 times I3 plus 0 times I4 is equal to 6. So this is the AX is equal to B form of these three equations. Now there is a very simple way of finding one particular variable since in our circuit we are interested in I4 and thus we can use Kramer's rule to find I4. So according to Kramer's rule if I want to find I4 this would be equal to d4 divided by d. There is a very easy way to find i4 by using Kramer's rule. So this would be d4 over d where d 
is the determinant of the coefficient matrix and d4 and d4 is the determinant of this coefficient matrix where the last column is replaced by the constant vector on the right hand side so if i write this i can write so first would be the determinant d which would be the same coefficient matrix 1 14 minus 14 1 0 10 minus 1 5 0 and d4 would be the first two columns remain the same 1 14 minus 14 1 0 10 and the last one would be then minus 3 44 and 6 so it's simply a division of these two determinants and when i carry this out so this is quite simple a determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix the answer comes out as minus 1560 divided by minus 280 which is equal to 6 amperes so you see how simpler the problem becomes when we use the method of matrices to solve networks Substitution in this case would have been quite cumbersome. So this concludes our lecture on branch current analysis, which becomes extremely important when we have current generators in the network. So in the next lecture, we'll look at another technique of solving a network, which is the principle of superposition. So see you in the next lecture.